Ladies and gentlemen, please, all the photograph, take your seat. The rest, we're going to start. We're not going to start by, we're not going to start by the governor. We want them to be at ease for a few minutes. I want to invite the, uh, the president, Dr. Eugen Jua, of the Nigerian Commission, Communication Commission. This, uh, the commission uh, is a great supporter of this event. We missed them at their lunch because the lunch was overtaken by the discussion. And uh, we promised and we committed to give them the podium. And that's what we're going to do now. And I asked the patience of the governor for a few minutes, not long, and the audience uh, to continue to be a uh, good listener. And um, I would like not to introduce you, Dr. Juat. Oop. Oh, it's coming. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't see. Your Excellencies, the Executive Governors of several states of Nigeria, Your Excellencies, uh, Ministers from Canada and Nigeria, Executives of uh, Industries, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen. Uh, my name is Eugene Jua. I'm from the Nigerian Communication Commission. The Nigerian Communication Commission is the primary regulatory agency for telecommunications in Nigeria. I was to have uh, this presentation during lunch. Uh, since lunch has finished, uh, I will just crave your indulgence to discuss investment opportunities in the telecommunications sector with you, uh, with particular reference to our broadband projects. The choice of broadband for us today is quite deliberate uh, from an opportunity point of view, especially when compared with mobile voice, which has attracted a lot of investments already in Nigeria. In the past 10 years, uh, mobile voice telephony has attracted more than $25 billion investment in Nigeria. So let us start talking about broadband investment opportunities in Nigeria. And the first place to start is where we are today. Today we have a lot of capacity, international submarine capacity that has landed on our shores, especially in Lagos. We have a total of about nine tetrabytes of international cable capacity on our shores. Uh, this, the problem that we have actually in Nigeria is taking this large international uh, cable capacity inland. The biggest challenge we have is to take them to the last mile. Continuing on where we are today, we have over 30,000 kilometers long of uh, intercity fibers already, but these intercity fibers are characterized by poor quality infrastructure by there is a very high volume of unutilized capacity due to duplications, and they are, they are obtainable at very high costs. 
Continue also where we are today. Uh, we have conducted a survey that shows that 86% of Nigerians prefer speed and reliability over any other thing. And you will notice that because of the poor infrastructure quality of broadband in Nigeria, uh, a great deal of opportunity exists in, in actually improving speed and reliability for our broadband infrastructure. Now to the role of NCC. NCC has a mandate to create the environment for private sector participation and investment in the broadband ecosystem via regulatory intervention. We are supposed to facilitate deployment with stimulus to undeserved, underserved and unserved areas. It is our mandate further to facilitate agreement and resolve disputes among stakeholders and then adapt legal and regulatory frameworks to the realities of digital economy. Our investment requirements are actually anchored on two broad initiatives, the first one being a wireless or spectrum-based initiative and the second one being a fixed infrastructure initiative. The wireless initiative is based on auctions, which we are planning later this year. And the purpose of the auction is actually the repurposing of the digital dividend that we are about to gain from uh, using spectrum that is currently under, under the possession of television stations. So we are replanning the 800 megahertz frequency for LTE. Incidentally, this does not fall into a digital dividend in Nigeria because our television stations don't use 800 megahertz. Um, the, the 800 megahertz band in Nigeria is being used by CDMA companies. And we are replanning it so that we upgrade CDMA services up to, to LTE. We are reforming the 700 megahertz band from television stations for LTE and also reforming the 2.6 uh, gigahertz band uh, for LTE too. We have a number of uh, slots uh, to include in auction baskets like the 30 megahertz slot in 2.3 gigahertz, um, some slots in the 5.4 gigahertz, and slots within the 1900 and 2100 megahertz uh, band. We hope to start auctions by August of this year. So there are investment opportunities for broadband using LTE wireless technology through auction. Our auctions will start both for, for incumbents, that is, a, uh, companies that are existing in Nigeria and greenfield projects, people, new people like Canadians who want to come since uh, Canadians are not represented within our telecommunication uh, industry. The second um, initiative that we have is a fixed broadband initiative which um, yeah, which is represented on the, on the slide that is there. As you can see from that slide, we have actually segmented the value chain, the infrastructure value chain in broadband into three segments, into three layers. Uh, the infrastructure layer being the bottom layer, then we have the operations layer, the middle layer, and the retail layer um, at, at, the, at the top end. This segmentation actually takes note of the fact that these three layers represent different investment perspectives. For example, the infrastructure layer, which we call the NETCO, um, represents a 25-year uh, investment profile 
while OPCO, you know, which is where most of the operators are today, like the GSM operators, look, they look at about eight-year investment profile. The retail end of the market actually is a short to medium term investment profile. So um, we have segmented this uh, into three layers and um, the, the, the bottom layer which is the net <laughs> okay, which is the net <laughs> infrastructure layer uh, actually is composed of the ducts that is uh, the real physical infra infrastructure, building docks and putting duct fiber in them. The, the OPCO, which is the operational layer, uh, involves putting equipment, transmission equipment, transmission equipment, while the, the end layer, uh, which is the retail uh, layer, is actually selling to, to end users. You can see that uh, actually it is an inverted pyramid. When you look at the number of participants in these various layers, uh, the infrastructure layer has very few participants, while the, radio, uh, the upper layer of retail uh, layer has um, a lot of participants. So that's, yeah. So where are we uh, today in this plan? We have mapped the country into different license areas. They are, we are looking at using the equal access or the utility model. We have also contracted the KPMG, an international consultancy company, to assist in developing the technical, legal, and regulatory framework for these our initiatives. Continuing. What will be the effects of the models that we have cho chosen? We are going to bridge gaps in broadband deployment, eliminate last mile issues, uh, resuscitate fixed telephone, reduce price of bandwidth, and unlock the massive brand broadband usage. Now, finally, overview of our work plan. Uh, you can see where we are today. We have completed project planning, uh, we are on the, it's an ongoing project feasibility study by KPMG, and we hope that towards the last quarter of this year, we actually get to um, a, a commercial and financial close for this. So this is basically the, uh, the investment opportunities that are available to Nigeria in the broadband area, and we hope that um, Canadian companies will take advantage of this. Uh, we hope to repeat the same performance we, we, we had in the mobile voice market, where Nigeria was the fastest growing market in the world for five years. Thank you very much.